Well, the coronavirus is here, and I keep hearing people say, well, I'm not going to live in fear. And I say, well, that's great. So how are you going to live? Nobody really asked me what I think it means to not live in fear, but I'm going to answer anyway. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the Personal Responsibility Lawyer Podcast like you have never heard it before. I am your host, Michael Lovins of the law firm Lovins Trosclair, and this is an entirely new topic for the Personal Responsibility Lawyer. It is not law. It is not the Constitution. It is not public policy of any sort. This actually gets into some Bible. So from all of my listeners who are not Christians, if you want to turn it off at this point, that's your prerogative. I'll let you listen to the next one. And if you are a Christian and you don't want to listen to it because I'm not a pastor, yeah, you're right. Um, but I can read. So I did a little reading, and I have some thoughts to offer. We're in coronavirus time. We all know that. And most of what I hear is from Christian people saying, well, I'm not going to live in fear. And I think that's great. I don't think we should live in fear. In fact, I think one of the great biblical principles is that we don't have to live in fear. But when you tell me how I don't have to live or how I should not live, that doesn't tell me about much about how I should live. It doesn't tell me what the scriptures say I should do. It just says that I should not live in fear. So I want to dig into that a little bit and see what that actually means for our lives in general and specifically when we are dealing with something like the coronavirus. There is a very, very famous story. Anyone who spent much time in Sunday school knows it. It's told in three of the Gospels. It's told in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, I believe. It is a story where Jesus and his disciples get into a boat. Two of the three versions, uh, Mark and Luke, uh, Jesus says, let's go over to the other side of the lake. In all of the versions, and this is essential to the story, there's a terrible storm that comes up. In all three of them, the disciples say, we're going to drown. They're afraid they're going to die. In all three of them, Jesus is sleeping in the boat. And the, the disciples come to him and they say, why are you sleeping? We're all going to drown. And in two of the three of them, Jesus, of course, well, he always wakes up. In two of the three of them, he says, why are you so afraid? And in all three of them, he says, why do you have such little faith? So, I want to dig into this story and see if we can learn anything about how we should actually live. Sometimes, I think it's important to look at what the Scripture does not say. And we don't necessarily form an entire doctrine around what it doesn't say, but sometimes we have to point out what it doesn't say because our brains have heard something so many times that we start to think it says something it doesn't say. So, I have three things that Jesus did not say. He did not get up and say, you idiots, there's no storm. He didn't say it because there was a storm. He knew there was a storm. And if you don't think he knew that, well, a couple of verses later, he calms the storm. The other thing he does not say is, you idiots, there's no danger. You're not going to drown. He never tells them that this is not a dangerous situation. And the third thing that he does not tell them is, don't bail water, don't row, don't adjust the sails, or whatever you do on a boat like that. Now, I would be wading into a massive sea of my own ignorance if I tried to tell you what I thought they were supposed to do to navigate through a storm. So that raises the question, to me at least, did Jesus trust his disciples? I've never thought of this question before, but it seems to me that we hear a lot about how we are supposed to trust God, and we should. That is largely the essence of what it means to have faith. But Jesus recognized that there was a storm, and he calmed it. But why was he sleeping in the first place? He got in the boat, presumably being Jesus, he knew that there would be a storm, and he wasn't terribly concerned about it. At least some of his disciples were experienced sailors. They had been fishermen. They knew how to be out on the sea. Now, they also knew that 
uh, storms, squalls were very dangerous. You could die out there. But it seems to me that maybe Jesus trusted his disciples because they, he knew they were experienced sailors who could handle this. Maybe he could sleep because he knew his disciples were capable. And so then when he gets up, he questions their faith. But he doesn't question their faith and say, you shouldn't have awakened me. Although I think we might be able to infer that. But he doesn't say, he doesn't question their faith in thinking that they were in danger. But we, we look later in the scriptures and James, he teaches that faith without works is dead. So that makes me believe that maybe Jesus saw their lack of faith by the fact that they weren't doing anything. It wasn't that they were sensing that there was a dangerous situation, but they weren't doing anything. It's not crazy to think that God might actually trust us because he did, after all, make us in his image. Now, there's another scripture says, God has not given us a spirit of fear. This is in 2 Timothy. Some versions say timidity, and some interpretations of that word are cowardice. So God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity or cowardice, and I would say, yes, that's absolutely true. But the verse doesn't end there. And I hear the rest of the verse a lot, but it often feels like it's thrown in there as kind of a throwaway. And the only thing that we're really making the point of is that God didn't give us a spirit of fear. But it says after that what he has given us. He didn't just give us the absence of fear. He also gave us a spirit of love and of power and of a sound mind. Again, some versions or some uh, interpretations interpret sound mind as self-discipline or self-control. So while we're facing coronavirus, I affirm those who say I'm not going to live in fear. But I say, now show me your faith through your actions. This is not me trying to use the Bible to tell you what your specific actions should be. I have opinions about that. I have opinions about the specific actions that you should do, but I don't think I find those the basis for those opinions in the Bible. And they have little, little to do with whether you take those actions out of fear or out of faith. Because Two people can take exactly the same action in exactly the same situation, and one is acting out of fear and the other is acting out of faith. I can't read into your heart and mind and know whether you're acting in fear or faith. But I can tell you that if you have faith, you will act. Fear is not an action. It's a feeling. I think God trusts us. I think he trusts us in a situation like the coronavirus. Oddly enough... I think God may trust us more than we trust God. He gave us love, power, and sound minds. So let's use them. Go get the best information that you can reasonably get. Humbly ask God for help. Then use the mind that God gave you to make prudent decisions. And use the power that God gave you to take smart actions for your own safety and for the safety of others. And then you have faith that God will use your faithful and fearless actions for good. We don't know how this ends. We don't know how many will get sick and we don't know how many will die. It might be absolutely horrible. It might be absolutely nothing that we forget in a few months. It's probably going to be something in between those two. But my faith isn't in how the coronavirus scare ends. Whether it ends well or poorly, it will end, but that's not where my faith is. My faith isn't in the government. It's not in the free market or the private sector. My faith isn't even in the Constitution, which I love to talk about and I think is the greatest political document ever written. My faith is in Jesus. And because of that, I'm going to use the tools that God gave me and he gave all of us He gave us love, power, and a sound mind. And I'm going to use those tools to engage with our world to make it better. For Lovins Trosclair and the Personal Responsibility Lawyer, I'm Michael Lovins. I can't complain, but sometimes I still do. 
This episode of the Personal Responsibility Lawyer Podcast is brought to you by my law firm, Levens Trostclair, where we use the civil justice system to hold people responsible for irresponsible choices when those irresponsible choices cause serious injuries and sometimes even death. We are personal injury trial lawyers, but we approach our cases a little differently than a lot of other lawyers who do the same basic kind of work. I really, really hope that you do not need us, but if you do need us, please call us before evidence gets lost. You can call us at 512-535-1649. Tell us you heard about us on the Personal Responsibility Lawyer podcast. You can also go to our website on the interwebs at www.ltlegalteam.com. That's L as in Levens, T as in Trosclair, legalteam.com. We are here to help. Thank you for listening to the Personal Responsibility Lawyer Podcast. If you like what you've heard or if you've learned something interesting, please do me a favor and rate the show on iTunes. It really does help. You can get more information about this show, including the show notes, at my personal website, michaellovins.com. And now I have to do some disclaimers where I say stuff that you already knew, but i got to say it anyway so that I keep the state bar happy. This podcast is not legal advice. You listening to this podcast does not make me your lawyer or you my client. Neither does it make any of my guests your lawyer. If you want me to be your lawyer, contact my office. If I can represent you, we will execute a written contract stating the specific terms under which I agree to represent you. Did you really need me to tell you that? I really, really hope not. Also, I am not certified by the Texas Board of Legal Specialization as a personal responsibility lawyer because they don't know what that is. They also have not certified me in any other areas of specialty that they actually do recognize. I think that does it for disclaimers. For Lovins Trosclair and the Personal Responsibility Lawyer Podcast, I am Michael Lovins. We'll see you next time.